Hello, I'm a Terminator. Cyber Time System Model 101. My mission is to inform you that Big Jack Films wishes to thank you for watching this special episode and to support him on Patreon. If you want to donate to the channel, just a dollar more will get you access to all of our content as well as other special features. My mission is programmed to also inform you that Big Jack Films will be attending Fan Expo Canada, October 22nd to the 24th, 2021, at the Metro Toronto Convention Centre at the South Building. There will be many special guests attending the event, including the recently announced Robert Patrick, the T-1000, advanced prototype from Terminator 2, Judgment Day, as well as Wayne's World. Have you seen this boy? Tickets are only available for a limited time. Link is in the description down below to purchase them. Gobit is in no way self-aware and will not pull the plug on this event. Thank you so much for watching and enjoy the show. Purchase tickets down below. Do it! Now! The following is a fan-based video review under fair use. The Fabulous Adventures to the Center of the Earth are owned by Jacinto Santos Paris, Screenbound Pictures, and the Jules Verne Estate. Please support the official release. Hey guys, what's up? It's Big Check Films here, and welcome back to the King Kong Review Series. Now, as we all know, the origins of King Kong stem partially back to Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's classic novel, The Lost World. But it seems fair that this time around we go back even further to that author's potential inspiration with the 18th century classic by Jules Verne himself, Journey to the Center of the Earth. The novel was first published in France in 1864, then reissued in 1867 in a revised and expanded edition, and told the story of Professor Otto Lindenbrock, who believes that there are volcanic tubes that reach to the very center of the Earth, where he and his expeditional crew contend with many dangers, including cave-ins, subpolar tornadoes, an underground ocean, and living prehistoric creatures from the Mesozoic era. The category of subterranean fiction existed well before Jules Verne, however his novel's distinction lay in its well-researched Victorian science and its contribution to the science fiction subgenre of time travel and prehistoric coexistence, which later inspired Sir Arthur Conan Doyle and eventually the likes of Michael Crichton's Jurassic Park and Marion C. Cooper with King Kong himself, making it, in a way, the first dinosaur adventure story. And this coming from the early days of these creatures' discoveries in the early 1800s by Sir Richard Owen, giving them the early names of Dinosauria, meaning terrible lizards. Now why is this iconic novel so important to this particular episode of the King Kong Reviews? Well, it's because the novel was translated to many adaptations on film, one of which being a forgotten Kong 76 ripoff with 1977's The Fabulous Adventures to the Center of the Earth. The story of this mild adaptation of Jules Verne's novel tells the tale of a group of geologists, including Professor Otto Lindenbrock, played by Kenneth Moore, discuss various theories on the makeup of the interior of the Earth. So him and his crew decide that the only way to know for sure would be to mount an expedition to discover which theory was true. While visiting the bookshop, Remember kids to support your local library. They're as important and beneficial as the internet. Why I have a beard the same as other Big Jack Films characters, I have no idea. He buys an old book containing undisclosed coded knowledge of the center of the earth from a mysterious gentleman. He enlists his niece, played by Ivane Sentis, and her love Axel, a soldier of the military, played by Pep Mounet, and Axel is charged with keeping a diary of the journey and often enhances his contributions to the expedition. Upon arriving in Iceland, they hire shepherd and mountaineer Hans, played by Frank Barana, and together the four of them set off on the adventure of a lifetime to the center of the earth. After a series of mishaps, including losing the mysterious book, about midway through their journey, they meet Olsen, a time-traveling scientist, played by Jack Taylor. Olsen reveals that the travelers the existence of a lost city, where clones of Olsen are conducting experiments using a mysterious box. Owen shows the group of flora and fauna of Middle-earth, God, I wish, including surviving dinosaurs and encounters with a giant prehistoric ape. But Olsen later sets off an explosion in this lost world beyond time, in hopes to allow the others to escape back to their home on the surface of the Earth. So you might be thinking this would have been a part of my original series of reviews regarding the many rip-offs of Kong in the 1970s prior and post the Dino De Laurentiis remake. 
Well, surprisingly, I only discovered this film quite recently thanks to word from fellow viewer and Kong fan Matthew Lamont. Thanks, Matt. And while you're at it, go check out his channel and this King Kong documentary. It's a great effort. So I knew at some point I had to review this movie. And after watching the film, I'm not gonna lie and say, well, despite some decent filmmaking on this one and the passable budget and quality, this movie is so slow! Out of all the 76 ripoffs I've seen, this one just drags, and it's honestly quite sluggish to sit through. But to be fair, that's most adaptations of Jules Verne's novel. Unlike Conan Doyle's Lost World, there's less action set pieces and the pacing is mostly off on a lot of them, with a few exceptions in adaptation. For example, Journey to the Beginning of Time, which borrows more loosely from the novel, has more fun set pieces with some quick yet charming stop motion dinosaur segments, and even a cheeky cheap 3D film starring Brendan Fraser and an oversized T-Rex are a lot more fun to watch than this one. Have you ever seen a dinosaur before? On it. But with that said, I will give this movie credit for being better than, say, the adaptation of the Asylum version. However, in terms of the best adaptation from book to screen, I'd more than likely recommend the 1959 20th Century Fox film, which actually predates the Irwin Allen remake of The Lost World, being one of the last credited films Willis O'Brien had a hand on. This film, however, takes some more liberties from the novel, adding the likes of a giant ape to cash in on the 76 remake of King Kong. The film was a Spanish production, so much like the ripoffs from Korea to Hong Kong in the UK, most countries were taking advantage of the Universal Paramount lawsuit at the time to cash in on the public domain of the Lovelace Kong novel. And to be honest, this film also fares better than Asylum's King of the Lost World. Which I pray I will never have to talk about again. No, I'm not doing it. Behind the scene wise, there's not much to go on, so we'll have to discuss the film from it alone, and despite the dragged out pace, the film does have some impressive visuals on it. For one thing, despite the rough grains and scratches on the print I own, the film is well shot, has some decent sets and props, and the dinosaur segments by the third act actually do a pretty impressive job for a Spanish production. Quite frankly, the dinosaur puppet effects at the time do look pretty good, and do match on par with the likes of the Doug McClure dino flicks from Britain. However, it still makes me wonder why the 76 King Kong didn't think to try something in the same manner with higher quality results. And speaking of Kong, let's talk about the giant ape suit used in the film, and to be honest, it's actually not half bad. It's well made in the muscle structure, and the actor does act like a gorilla for the time. However, not gonna lie and say the animatronic close-ups of the mask do look pretty goofy. In some cases, it's like the mouth is connected to the eyebrow joints, and you can tell it was operated by the actor himself, and it looks like he was really struggling to move it. Though, to be fair, our Kong mask was using a spirit Halloween mask that used the same technique, so I can't really fault the filmmakers for the time. The movie just feels like it needed a giant ape to cash in on the 76 remake, and even English distributors knew it. The film rights were picked up later for a limited theatrical release in 1977 and for syndication on television with an English dub. Kind of like how the filmmakers in Japan and Rankin Bass did The Last Dinosaur around the same time. You Ding dong! Now I can give poor dubs a pass for foreign movies so long as the acting is good like in Italian spaghetti westerns, but this one felt a little rushed and almost like it's trying to back up with the slow pace of the movie itself. But why? It's unlikely we'll come back, you see. So I, so I want to marry you. That's why. Yeah. The film also had several different alternate titles. Here I'm calling it The Fabulous Journey to the Center of the Earth, but sometimes it's even called Where Time Began. Jesus, is that enough? I guess they were taking notes from the many English dubs of the Showa-era Godzilla films at the time. Though to be fair, even Kong ripoffs got that treatment, with Mighty Peking Man getting an English dub in 1980 and retitled as Goliathan. To all that stand in his way. <laughs> Goliathon is coming your way. But aside from that, guys, there's not much else to talk about with this film. Overall, The Fabulous Adventures to the Center of the Earth is nothing special, and quite frankly, one of the lesser, if not more, blander ripoffs of the 70s Kong movies. It has some decent effects here and there, 
but drags with a slow pace, boring characters, and telling the tale we have seen time and time again. Let alone in better Kong movies quite recently with Godzilla vs. Kong and the Hollow Earth theory with the MonsterVerse. But if you really need your Jules Verne fix in terms of adaptations, I'd recommend the 1959 film or the Brendan Fraser movie for the better, because outside of a decent gorilla costume and some passable visuals, this movie really has nothing to offer, coming in at a dragging 2 out of 10. Not worth the time, and not worth the effort to track down. Quite frankly guys, you can definitely leave this one in the center of the earth, buried. And that's it, guys. I don't know how many of these damn 70s Kong ripoffs exist, but I pray to God this is the last one. But of course, I want to hear your thoughts on the fabulous adventures of the center of the earth in the comments section below. So until the next video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. This is Big Jack Films, signing off for now. Enter. Ah, Dr. Stone. Come to report the latest on our reinstated asset. Patient 92 has been rather cooperative. How unlike him. Patient 92 has always been the rebel type. What has changed him? Perhaps, uh, the fear of returning to the Vard has spooked him into surrender. He's put on a bright face after all these years, but the brightness has cracked. Soon he will gravel to us fully. Then the tech will be of great use to our research. That is what he'd have you believe. Be mindful, Dr. Stone. He is not to be trusted by any means. Any signs of falseness must be shut out. Do not give him a chance of hope. Keep him in line. The more you keep from him, the faster he will break. He was quite respective to our authority and- His intelligence would be his stupidity. Dr. Stone, double your security on the asset. Yes, sir. Our reunion will come soon enough, patient 92.